So Luke, congratulations. You received positive feedback on all of the data analyst interviews that you've done with our company. Ah, oh, thanks, Mr. Ken. Before we extend an offer, though, I need to make sure how comfortable you are with the following. Okay. Autonomy in your task with potential lack of direction in others. Yeah. Metrics and KPIs that are ever-changing because of indecisive leadership. Um, sure. A somewhat competitive salary that is, frankly, pretty far below other entry-level positions in data. Um, what's the pay? Needing to learn new tools and redo your analysis because management thinks that new tools are really cool and should be put into production. Redo my work? Working exhaustively on a strict deadline for projects with the potential for your work never to see the light of day. Is this for real? And finally, non-constructive comments that can cause you emotional or physical pain. Did you say physical pain? <laughs> I, I'm joking. <laughs> Phew. Uh, about the physical pain. What? Okay then, we'll be extending an offer that you'll need to sign by the close of business today. But what about those other things that you said? Don't forget, end of day. Bye. What the? What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And I've been working as a data analyst this past few years, and I've found a number of different aspects that I'm gonna to outline today that I definitely think you should consider before becoming a data analyst. Don't worry, these aspects aren't as extreme as what Mr. Ken, I mean, Kenji, and I also demonstrated in that opening scene. But it also isn't always glamorous. Just like any other job, it has ups and downs associated with it. So with that, let's jump into the first one. Because of the data analytical skills that I've built up over the past number of years, it's pretty common for non-data nerds to come up to me at work and ask questions such as, hey Luke, can you help me real quick with this Excel issue? Or even worse, I have this idea for a dashboard. Do you think you could build it for me? Now don't get me wrong, it's pretty awesome and humbling that people look to me as a problem solver. But during the day, I typically have limited time as I'm working on tasks that are assigned by the person that pays my paycheck, my boss. However, I do most of the time end up giving into these requests because that's just my nature. But it does end up eating a lot of my time during the wake day because of this. Now, the positive aspect of this is it not only has helped me refine my skills by teaching others how to actually do these tasks, but also it's worked in my favor for getting positive evaluations from my coworkers and thus led to those positive evaluations from my boss. All right, next up is salary. And let's just say I didn't choose the data analyst life because of salary. The data analyst life chose me. I wake up. As I detailed in a recent video on the most popular jobs in data science, data analysts receive some of the lowest salaries for entry level roles. And this is actually for a good reason. When you compare data analysts to those other roles, data analysts typically have less formal training of in-depth usage of tools. And also there's usually less educational requirements, such as you don't have to have a master's to become a data analyst. But I actually think that those two things of lower requested skill levels and lower requested education are actually a good thing. If you're interested in a newcomer to data science, data analysts I think are the perfect starting role to get into for your first job. Take for example, Ben. He's a former data engineer at Meta and he's the brains behind the Seattle data guy. Ben started his journey in data science by becoming a data analyst first. And then from there, once he started leveling up his skills more, he then transitioned over to becoming a data engineer. Regarding the salary number itself, I do think that you have to have a high enough salary in order to support your lifestyle. But I'm not a fan of choosing a job or a potential role based on salary alone. Instead, I think you be, need to be choosing a job or a position based on your passion and your interest in that over a salary. Job satisfaction is more important to me, so therefore I'm more comfortable with this type of salary. So personally, I've never handled rejection very well. It's probably why I have commit issues. But rejection is actually pretty commonplace in data analytical projects. For example, I was working on a Tableau dashboard to be used to investigate a supply chain issue. The dashboard that my stakeholders wanted was quite simple. They just wanted a line plot showing how a particular metric was changing over time. But as I investigated this issue, I found that there were actually other metrics that were influencing this main metric, driving it up and down. So like any data nerd, I went to the extreme and I built a dashboard that had all of these different metrics. Personally, I obviously thought that this dashboard was better and I was really excited to show it to my stakeholders. Unfortunately, my stakeholders did not find value in the dashboard that I created. 
Instead, they wanted me to revert back to the previous design they suggested using only that single metric. For me, this was a learning experience that just because I think that this dashboard or the solution that I developed is great, my stakeholders may not think that as well. Being a data analyst isn't as easy as Kaggle makes it out to be. Mainly, there isn't always this perfect data source available for you to access in order to do your job. Instead, a lot of times you actually have to jump through a lot of different hoops to get the data that you need. For example, on one project I was working on, we needed data that was in an application. The problem is, is that application was easy to put the data into, but it was not easy to collect the data from. So I talked with the stakeholders and got their consent to build a bot in order to go into this application and extract the data we needed. Over the course of a month, I worked to extract all the data from the application in order for us to start diving into it for our insights. Well, it turns out that the data I collected had a lot of issues with it. And one of the key stakeholders in this project was adamant that we couldn't use the data for this project. We ended up canceling this entire project because of the issues with the data, and my project never saw the light of day. The potential for your work never to see the light of day. Is this for real? So basically, a month of my life was wasted. So my learnings from the project were to investigate data quality early. Don't wait until you're extracting all the data to start checking the data and making sure that it's correct. Investigate it early and often to make sure that you're getting the data that you need. So I recently received a question from a subscriber that battles social anxiety, and they were asking whether becoming a data analyst would be a good career switch for them. As an introvert myself, I'd very much like to work in a bubble, looking at and researching data, trying to solve problems, and then building dashboards. But unfortunately, that's not the nature of a data analyst's role. I would say that more than half of my time is spent communicating with others, whether that be via written or oral communications. I think it's necessary though, in order to find out what people's problems are having and then solve them. I feel like this is especially important for newer and aspiring data analysts that are gonna be new to a team. During that time, you need to be able to ask a lot of questions and be able to understand the dynamic of the teams and the problem that they're facing. And so this communication is really key to have. On a positive note, I feel like this has done a great job of getting me out of my comfort zone as a introvert and really pushing me to go to the next level of exploring problems. But I do wanna share this because I don't want you to think that you're really sitting in front of a computer, just crunching numbers all day, not interacting with others. The tools you end up learning and then growing to love aren't always the ones that you'll always be using. Take for example, my case. During my first role, I learned and built a full solution with Power BI. I grew to love this tool for all of its different capabilities. Because of this, I was very excited about implementing this tool in my future roles. Unfortunately, when I moved on to my next role with a completely different team, they used a completely different dashboarding system of Tableau for their dashboard needs. So I ended up having to spend my free time learning this new tool of Tableau. But I did find like that there was a lot of different synergies between that of Power BI and Tableau, so it made it a lot easier to pick up this tool. But in the long run, I actually found that learning and using this new tool at Tableau really helped develop me further as a data analyst and understand what people's needs were. So you may love a certain tool and you may devote a lot of time to actually learning it, but when it comes to the actual use of it, it's gonna come down to that company or client and what their need is. So let's say you're an aspiring data analyst and you're wanting to work with either Python or R. Judging at a recent poll that I gave my subscribers, more than a third of you are focusing your time and efforts on learning Python or R. Now, I do think it's great that so many are aspiring to learn this programming language of either Python or R. I think it's a great skill to have. But as a data analyst myself, and also from research that I've performed, I found that Excel and SQL are the two top skills to know as a data analyst. So for those looking to land those roles as an entry-level data analyst, I think it's really important to keep this in mind at what the true skills are that you should be focusing on and what you'll actually be using as a data analyst. It wasn't until a few years into my role as a data analyst that I was able to even use Python, and even that was a stretch. So I share this forewarning not for you to abandon your passion. One, I think Python and R are both pretty difficult skills to learn, and so I think you do have to actually put in the time and effort to learn these, and it may take a few years to learn them. And two, if you really are passionate about these programming languages, I would highly encourage you to start looking into other roles in data science, such as data engineers, machine learning engineers, or data scientists, as those typically use programming languages more in their roles. 
As an entry-level data analyst, you're typically lower in the rankings of a company and you're not necessarily making those decisions on major projects. But that isn't to say that you don't have influencing power. As an example, I was working on yet another dashboard that we were working to deploy to the region of North America. My boss was really pleased with the solution that we had built and she actually was working to try to get it expanded to be used in multiple other regions and mainly used globally for the company. When my boss and I talked to all our different counterparts in all the different regions globally, we found that a lot of them were interested in the solution and wanted to implement it. Well, we talked to her boss, her boss's boss, and her boss's boss's boss, and we had meetings and we had another meetings, and eventually it was decided that we weren't gonna go with this solution and that we weren't gonna expand it globally. And this was pretty disheartening to me as I had put my time and effort into building the solution and I could see the need in these other regions, but it was ultimately decided by management not to use the solution. Now I share this story not to say that, hey, you don't have any pull as a entry level data analyst. I do feel that you still have some pull, and I feel like this story specifically really influenced me to work on my negotiation skills in order to better capture and showcase what a potential tool or solution will give. Now, wrapping up all the sections with this final thought. Being a data analyst and also those that work in data science, it's all about being a lifelong learner. So if you're aspiring to be a data analyst and you think you're only gonna have to learn one skill and that's it, once you land your job, you won't have to further develop at all, I think you're pursuing the wrong job and wrong passion. Personally, I'm always working to learn and explore new skills in order to accomplish my tasks. I actually find that this is the most beneficial aspect of my career because there's always something that I can strive towards accomplishing and something new for me to work towards. And to me, this is really exciting because I always have something to strive towards in order to become a better data analyst. So the goal of showing those nine or so different things was hopefully not to deter you from becoming a data analyst, but more to share insights of what is a role of a data analyst. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.